this is up on classroom. Uh, 35 points. We've been doing this all unit, right? I'm going to tell you two triangles are similar. You got to match up the corresponding sides. And, and look, it may not be your traditional diagram where it's just, oh, here's the triangle. Here's a triangle. They're congruent, congruent, congruent. Match up the corresponding sides. You know, it might be something nuts. You've seen a couple nutty diagrams in your, you know, here. There's the right angle. There's the right angle. Let's now match up the sides or me. You had one in your homework. Uh, you guys got your packets out. Nobody asked me about it, so I think you guys were good with it, but I'm talking about a diagram like, where was it? I was concerned about it. Page 11, number three. All right, page 11, number three, matching up a diagram like that. Okay, make sure you know how to match up the sides there. All right, so it might not be your traditional diagram. Uh, look, three and a half ways. I want you to know all three and a half. You never know. Maybe I threw the half on there somewhere. If the triangles are congruent, they're similar. All right, so make sure we know all three methods, right? Real quick, angle, angle. I know that's on the top of your mind because that is what we use with Bruce, but there's two, uh, two and a half other methods, which are side, side, side. If all the sides are in the same ratio, you have side, angle, side. If the sides are in the ratio and the angle in between are congruent, and then you have congruent triangles means I have similar triangles. Okay. Uh, there will be a couple problems where you're going to have to factor or use quadratic formula. I will provide it. It's at, right at the top of the test on Friday. Quadratic formula is right there. Uh, but you may have to factor as well. I am not going to force you to do one way or the other. Okay. I, I would like you to see, see to factor. All right. If I'm going to send you to honors algebra two next year, but if you want to use quadratic formula because you feel more comfortable, feel free. All right. There will be two proofs at the end of the exam. Uh, let's be honest here. We've done a lot of work with proofs. I probably doubt it's just proved two triangles similar. Be ready for CSS, you know, prove proportions are equal or the means and extremes are equal. Be prepared for that. Probably not going to be just proved triangles similar. Uh, and then finally, just a heads up, probably going to need Pythag on this test. I'm probably going to need Pythag to do something. And remember, Pythag is only for what type of triangles? Right triangles. So if it's not a right triangle, Pythag's not even in play. All right. Anything you want to ask before we hop into the some of the problems I'm going to ask you about? We are going to do some problems in your packet. I now you have problems in your packet, and then I've suggested textbook. Please stay away the text away from the textbook questions until tomorrow, because that's those questions I'm going to play the game with tomorrow. All right, so just finish the packet tonight. All right, don't sneak into the textbook ones yet. All right, you ready to go? All right, I am going to do question three first. So everyone take a peek at question three. I need to give you some uh, additional info. I did not give you this unit to do this problem. because I don't think anybody would be able to do this problem without this additional info. Here's why. Go ahead, label these similar triangles for me. AC is 12, DC is 7, DE is 5. The perimeter of triangle ABC is 30. What's the perimeter of the smaller one? Uh, you guys wouldn't be able to do this one right now, I don't think. Because look, uh, all right, I need to know what CE is, right? I need to know what CE is, that missing side to do the perimeter. So some of you, and don't start it, I'll start it, and you guys will see why we're stuck. I'd go, all right, let's see. I know the 5 corresponds with 12, and if anybody's remember, uh, anybody needs a reminder, how do I know 5 and 12 match up? I said DE in the similar statement is in the same spot AB is. Oh, A. I should add seven, sorry, seven. C, D, and A, C, sorry, my fault. One job, Carlin, one job. So that should be a seven, sorry. So seven and the 12 match up, and then you're gonna say, all right, the X matches up with B, C, but there's nothing there. And we are certainly not gonna put a, another variable there. All right, so how the heck do I find the perimeter of the small one? Because I'm stuck. Here's how we're gonna do it. Little fact for you. 
ratio of the sides. If you know the ratio of the sides, you also know the ratio of the perimeters because they're equal. Okay, so whatever ratio the sides are in, it's the same ratio the perimeters are in. Okay. So how does that help me? All right, well, the 12 and the 7 matched up, right? Or Yeah, right, 7 and 12. AC 12. So that means the sides are in a ratio of 7 to 12, and so are the perimeters. So now I can just set this equal to, all right, trying to find the perimeter of the small one, so that goes with the 7, and I already know the perimeter of the bigger one, which is 30. Okay, so everyone see the side ratio is always equal to the perimeter ratio. So something to keep in mind if you can't find all the sides to find the perimeter. Whatever ratio the sides are in, the perimeters are in. And I think when we cross multiply, that ends up being 17 and a half. All good? Before I get to the next one, I'll start calling on you guys. All right, I just want to make sure our algebra is up to par. Let's go to number five. Just want to make sure our algebra is good. So solve for x. That's all I want you to do. You're welcome, by the way. You don't have to make a proportion. You don't have to cross multiply. You don't even need to set it equal to zero. You're welcome. Uh, I gave you a hint, though, here at the problem. What's probably going to end up being used here, Zeev? Quadratic formula, right? Because I asked for your answers to be in simplest radical form. And the only way I get a radical is if I use quadratic formula, not factoring. Uh, all right, so one of you guys help me out. Can you help me out with the A, B, and C value before I start? Uh, let's roll here. One, two, Olivia, what's my A, B, and C value? Let's start with the A value. Two, B. Yeah, let's finish. C. There you go. Good. Uh, quadratic formula. Don't even try to factor because... Hey, I, I'm not factoring with something where the A value is not 1. So next up, all right, quadratic formula. I'll provide that to you Friday. X equals negative B plus or minus big square root. Underneath it, B squared minus 4A and C all over 2A. Use parentheses when you plug in a number. Use parentheses. Uh, quick question here, kids. It does say negative B, but my B value is negative 5. What's it going to turn into? Positive 5. Good talk. Plus or minus. Again, use parentheses now, please. Use parentheses. And make sure your A value is 2 at the bottom. Usually you guys are used to plugging in 1 there, but it's 2 times 2. And then we'll talk about your answer. Remember, you do not have a plus or minus button, so make sure you add it back into your answer. 5 plus or minus 25 minus 8, 17. All over 4. Don't you usually have to check for something here when I factor or use quadratic formula? Don't we usually check to reject? Why don't I have to worry about it on this one? No diagram. No diagram, right? I don't want you to get in that mindset Friday. If it doesn't have a diagram, there's no reason to reject. Don't reject an answer unless there's a diagram. All right, no need to reject if it just says solve for X. I may do that on Friday. All right, so no diagram, no rejection. 
We good on the calculators over there? We got user error. Oh, I just keep getting non-real. Non-real. Are you putting it in parentheses? Yeah. You are. Well, no. I'm Put really it in parentheses. That's why. Okay. All right, because here's what, when you go here, Haley, negative 5 squared, it thinks the answer is negative 25, but it should be positive 25. But you don't get that unless you put the parentheses around there. All right, put them around. Anybody else? Okay, another one for you. Let's go to 6. All right, told you the lines were parallel. Remember, don't freak out about that. I need to tell you that because that's what makes the triangle similar by angle angle. So no need to freak out about that. It's not going to affect your proportion. All right, let's help me help me build this bad boy. Start with any side in either triangle. Do not give me partial sides. Give me any full side in the small or the big triangle. Your call, your start. Shoom. Gabby, what's good? Two X. Oh, look at you showing off. Nice. Look at you. Two X minus two. So in case people don't know, Gabby gave us side AD. Side AD. So what does AD match up with in the small triangle? AD matches up with Zoe. AB, which would be X. Good call. So these have to be together somehow. On top, one on top, one on the bottom, or across from each other in the numerators or denominators. All right. Gabby started us off with a side from the big triangle, so I need another side from the big triangle. You're going to have to combine like terms right now, not at the end, right now. So give me another side from the big triangle when you combine like terms. Shroom, Amy. Looking for a side from the big triangle. Other than AD, we already have that. X minus one. X minus one, AE, good job. Amy, combine the negative four and the three. Combine your like terms before you put it in the proportion. I don't want to see three of them in there. Combine the like terms. And then X minus one corresponds with what in the small triangle now? Boom, four, Doyle. Good work. One's will. Three. Thank you. Any issues building the proportion? I don't care if it looks different than mine, just as long as we're cross multiplying the same things. All right, here we go. Speaking of cross multiplying, let's roll. Let's see how we do here. X squared minus X. 6X minus 6. Do not determine if you have to factor or use quadratic formula until the equation is equal to zero. So move over the 6x and move over the negative 6. And we should end up with negative 7x. Okay, in an honors level class, if I can factor, I want to factor. Tomorrow, I don't care. Friday, I don't care what you do. All right, if you're able to factor but you decide to use quadratic formula, I'm not going to stop you. All right, but we can factor this. Two numbers that multiply to 6 but add to negative 7. All right, we're multiplying to this bad boy and adding to this one. Multiply to 6, add to negative 7. There's only one combo, one combination of numbers. What's that combination? Doyle, great job. He's going to owe me so much when he gets back. Hopefully you're listening to this. Eight, Josh. Uh, six and one. You got some signage there for me? Negative one, positive six. What does it have to add to? Uh, negative seven. Uh, both negative. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good catch. Now comes the fun part. X equals six and X equals one. Hey, uh, was there a diagram here? Yeah, there was. And I'm afraid some of you aren't gonna panic because you just see both answers are positive. Oh, okay, I'm good. I don't care, you still have to check them. 
All right, I know we're used to one being negative and that's probably the one we're rejecting. Well, both came out to be positive here and guess what? One needs to be rejected. One of those answers needs to be rejected. Which one? I don't know, plug each in. Plug each X value in and see which one's gonna give me a negative side somewhere. And which one gives you a negative answer? X equals one. Now look, why? Why doesn't that work? You plug in one right here for DB, you're gonna get a negative side. You plug in one here for CE, you're gonna get a negative side. Well, Mr. Carly, if you plug it in for AB, you don't. I don't care. As long as you get one negative side, that's good enough for rejection. What? That's what I thought. All right, well, next time you have a thought, forget well, it. Well, actually, no. It, once you get zero, is that not kind of equal to one zero? If I get zero, I can't have a side length that has no length. Yeah, so if I get zero, that would be a problem. And then we do have to add, like, it's 2x minus 2, or would it just be x minus 2? Like, if you were to plug that one. If I, I plug, I'm just going to plug, I don't care about the whole side here. It's just even right here. I can't, that side, this, even though it's not a full side, this segment can't be negative. I have a negative length. Okay. Everyone else good? Why we're rejecting one, even though it's positive. We've never done this. Okay. Check both. Check both. Yeah, that's a big X. I'm making a point. Does six work? Is six okay? Yeah, six was fine. And also, uh, we better make sure we're finding X, right? We're finding AB, which is X, okay? Yeah. Just make sure you're finding that and I, if I don't have to plug it in. What's up, Aiden? What happens if, like, they both don't work? Well, the answer to your question would be it would be no solution. Okay. But I would never do that to you. Okay, I'm not going to do that to you. But the math answer to that would be no solution. Anybody else? Good question. Anything else going? Okay, I think that is all I wanted to do with you. So please finish everything in your packet. Answers in the back of the packet. Try, if you finish, okay, you're good. Try not to go into the textbook because I don't want you to do the problems we're doing for the game tomorrow.